those who attended yesterday's seminar on hospitality and worship heard me say that how we see one another matters. Despite our many differences, as Christians, we are called to see one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Seeing one another in this way reminds us that we are part of one and the same family. And it enables us to better respect the dignity of every human being. Everyone knows that there are disagreements in biological families. And that being part of God's family doesn't ensure that we will always agree with the choices our brothers and sisters in Christ make. Disagreements over who is right and wrong are just as prevalent as those over who is more righteous, more faithful, more active, more loving. And those over who's better at following through, at stewardship, at being more welcoming, I think it's safe to say that our sense of family does not ensure instant and long-lasting harmony amongst us, at least in this life. However, it does mean even though we may be unhappy about the choices of another, we are still called to love them. It's only through love that we are able to hold on to our relationship. Because without relationship, we're a lot like the Pharisee and the tax collector in today's Gospel reading. Both are part of the same family. They are both Jews. And we know this because only a Jew is allowed to enter the temple to go beyond that outer courtyard into the presence of God to offer prayer. Everyone else was kept at a distance. Despite the relationship that exists between them, they do not stand together. They stand alone and apart from one another. And it's likely because when they looked at each other, they saw the other through the eyes of this world, of society, instead of as God sees them. Their worldly differences govern their actions and ultimately the way they seek God's grace. Now one of the points of this parable is that God will judge us as we judge one another. If we look at one another, and seek grace that we feel is owed to us because of something we have done or because we're somehow better than someone else, then the only grace we are told we will receive is that which we give unto ourselves. On the other hand, if we look at one another, as God sees us, admitting our own failings, knowing that we are no better or worse than one another. God's grace will be realized. Sadly, in today's church, I believe most look at one another through the lens, through the eyes of society. Pick the issue, be it politics or abortion, be it the death penalty or constitutional freedoms, be it safety and security, whether it's national or individual, we look at one another and find it difficult to stand with one another, seeking comfort and relief from the anger and frustration that arises out of the tension these issues cause in our relationships. We choose to stand alone in the presence of God, as did the Pharisee and tax collector. The good news is that over time, 
Our relationship with God reminds us of our relationship with one another. And even though we may disagree with one another in an almost visceral way, with the opinions or choices that someone has or makes, we're at least able to come together in community in the presence of God. Albeit sometimes with a little distance between us. You know, but distance is really a relative term. It can be experienced sitting on one side of the aisle or the other. It can be sitting downstairs listening to the service through the PA system. It can be experienced as we sit next to or across from someone else. I mean, families know we can sit around the dinner table in close proximity to one another and still feel worlds apart. When this type of division manifests itself, it grieves our Lord. Remember, in Genesis, we were created not to be alone, but to be in community, in relationship with both God and one another. The whole story the Bible tells us of is God's continuous efforts to help us see this for ourselves so that we might desire what God desires. The relationship we once enjoyed in the garden restored to its fullness. I'd like us to think back to an image our presiding bishop used to describe <clears throat> our relationships with God and one another. If you remember, he used an image of a wagon wheel. Now, if we are on the outer rim of that wheel and God is smack dab in the middle, then like the spokes that converge, when we draw closer to one another, we are just naturally drawn closer to God. And when we draw closer to God, we are drawn closer to one another. And the only way this doesn't work is if we choose to stay on the outside rim of that wheel. We choose to ignore the invitation to relationship God offers. And while that's a choice we're free to make, it's not the one God wishes for us. That's why God continuously reaches out to us through the Holy Spirit and reaches out to others through People like us. <coughs> to those who are still on that outer edge to help them, encourage them to begin their journey towards God's grace. Here's something to think about, though. If they don't know what God's grace is, how do we encourage them to accept it? <coughs> I know we can tell them what it means to us, but if two people try to explain their understanding of grace and how it is imparted and their understanding is as different as that of the Pharisee and the tax collector, how is the person hearing the story supposed to know that grace is really something to be desired? The only way we can help them is to invite them into a place, a time when grace can be experienced. As we discussed in the seminar yesterday, our worship leads us intentionally to a closeness together. A closeness that comes to a point in our worship where we rest in the presence and grace of God. Through the hymns we sing, the prayers we share, the message of hope we hear in the scriptures, the sermon, and in the Eucharistic prayer. We learned yesterday, worship's kind of like a large funnel. We are dumped in with all our misconceptions, all our distractions, all our feelings about one another, ourselves, and God. And we pass through filter after filter that our worship offers, and in each one of those filters, a portion of what holds us apart 
loses its grip. Until we reach that point in worship where we rest in the presence of God. Time when we know God is with us. That God's grace fills us. And that those things that once divided us, those things the world <clears throat> wants us to see, no longer have the power to do so. Unfortunately, that moment doesn't last very long, does it? And before we know it, we're back here at worship, seeking more and more of God's grace again and again and again. And that's a good thing, that we keep coming back, seeking more grace. But like dehydration, you know that the time, by the time we feel thirsty, by the time we feel we need more of God's grace, we're already behind the power curve. We're already in trouble. As we heard two weeks ago, one of the reasons we gather together in worship is to receive the nourishment we need to face the tasks and challenges before us. Wouldn't it be nice that instead of coming to worship running on empty each week or coming behind the power curve, we were able to receive booster shots between visits? We can. We can through the grace God offers us through one another. Here's the thing, though. If we see one another as society sees us, then we're not going to see the grace that is right there. Now here's a little good news for you. If, if we are in relationship with one another, if we can see one another as brothers and sisters in Christ, this gets a whole lot easier. And I realize that relationships like this don't happen overnight. They take time. They take effort. And one way to build and strengthen our relationships is through our worship. Another, through our fellowship. How can we stay mad at someone we have just been laughing with or having fun with? Coming together in community, whether it is to have fun, to do work, or to worship, lays a foundation that we can build upon. A foundation that enables us to look beyond the differences that the world wants us to see so that we might see one another as God sees us. The unity this offers not only strengthens our sense of community, it enables God's grace to be made known. Amen.